Welcome back. In part one, I covered the rationale for compound annual growth rate over the mean drawdown as a performance metric and why it performs so well at the selection of the most robust parameters from an optimization. I also covered why I consider this metric to be so much better than the more widely used compound annual growth rate over maximum drawdown. And this is due to a major bias that this latter metric introduces. So if you haven't seen part one already, there's a link to it in the description right below. But let's now move on to the required code for this metric. Okay, so I thought it would be a good idea to use the previous implementation of the performance metric that I looked at in a previous episode as the starting point for this episode. So if you remember, as part of that, I implemented a modified profit factor performance metric. And so alongside that now, I will implement the compound annual growth rate over mean drawdown, and the user will be able to select as part of the input parameters, which of those they're going to use. So we have this enumerated value here that contains a list of the available performance metrics. And you can see here that we've got the standard profit factor and the modified profit factor, which we showed how to implement last time. And now I've added this additional option for the compound annual growth rate over the mean drawdown. And then lower down here, you can see we've got the input parameter to select that performance metric. And I've got that set now to the default of CAGR over mean drawdown. But of course, the user could change this when they start the EA at runtime. And so the next thing we need to determine is how we will go about calculating the mean drawdown across the entire backtest period. And there's a couple of ways we could do this. We could either calculate the equity in the account at the time that every trade closed. And indeed, this is the way that natively MT5 does this in the strategy tester. So if you've ever looked at the equity and balance chart, that's based on the equity and balance at the time that each trade closes. But the problem with that is that it doesn't give you any indication of what happened to the equity while trades were open. So if you had some trades that went into significant loss and then recovered, that loss would not be captured as part of that mechanism. And so the approach that I prefer personally is to store the equity in the account at intervals of one hour throughout the whole period of the backtest. And it's this equity history array that you see here that stores those values. Now I store this every hour, which is fine for the duration of my trades in my systems. However, if the time frame of the trades that you're trading is very short, then you might want to modify this code to store the equity values every 15 minutes or maybe every five minutes. But as I say, the example I'll show you today stores the equity every hour. Okay, so if we take a look at on init, you can see I've added this additional condition here that just makes sure that if the user is using the compound annual growth rate over mean drawdown as the performance metric, it won't allow this to be run if a fixed lot size or the minimum lot size options are being used for the position size. And when this is the case, it will just print out a notification to the user and then return in its parameters incorrect, which means the EA will stop. And this is just a fail safe that I like to use to make sure that the input parameters are all in sync with each other and are suitable for the backtest. And then you'll notice this section here, which only ever gets run if we are running this in the MQL backtester, where it firstly sets the initial date of the backtest, which is then used in the CAGR calculation, and also stores the first value in our equity history array. So that will be the starting deposit of the account at the beginning of the backtest. And so then we move on to the onTick function. 
Now, obviously, you'll have a lot more code in your EA that will be determining what happens with your trading system. But as I said earlier, I've omitted that from this just to focus on the code for the performance metrics. So this is the code here that stores the history in the equity array. And again, as you can see, this only ever runs if we're in the back tester. So to control when the equity values get saved into the array, I use a structure for the date and time. And as you can see here, it's only when we enter a new hour that this code contained within the if statement will be run. And so the first thing we do here is ascertain the current size of the array. In other words, how many equity values are currently being stored. And then in the next line, we simply increase that by one. And then once we've done that, we're safe to store the most recent equity value at this point in time in the most recent cell of the array. What we then have to make sure we do is set this global variable here to be the current hour that's being processed. So the next time that on tick runs, it won't perform this task again, and it will wait for the next hour. So with this code in place, by the end of the back test, we will have a fully populated equity history array that will store the equity value at every single hourly interval throughout the whole period of time. And this, of course, is what we now use to calculate our metric. So whenever you need to create a new performance metric in code, you have to do that in a function called onTester. And this is a function that gets called at the very end of the backtest. So at the top here, you can see the two methods that we implemented last time. Firstly, for the standard profit factor. And if you remember, we used the built-in tester statistics function in order to get this. And then we also implemented our custom performance metric, which was the modified profit factor. And so now below those, I've just added this additional condition here for the compound annual growth rate over mean drawdown. So what happens here is that a function to ascertain that CAGR over mean drawdown is called, and we pass into this the custom performance metric variable by reference. So when that gets set in the function, it will then be available in this onTester calling function. And also a value representing the number of trades that were executed during the backtest also gets returned directly from this function. And the purpose of that is so that we can check that there's a sufficient number of trades to provide statistical significance from this particular test. And as you can see here, if the number of trades is less than 250, we determine that we don't have that statistical significance. And so the performance metrics get set to zero. Now, as the comment here suggests, if your system is producing trades generally in great excess of this number, then it's probably advisable to increase this in order to increase the statistical significance of the backtest further. So let's now take a look at how this compound annual growth rate over mean drawdown is calculated. So as you can see, we're passing in this value by reference. So as long as we set this variable in this function, it will then be available to the calling on tester function. Now the first part of the code here is in order to determine the number of trades. And so we first select all of the deals from the trading history that's just taken place. And then we iterate through all of those deals looking specifically for all of the deal entry outs, which of course are when those trades closed. And so when we find one of these, we increment the number of trades, and by the time it's gone through all of the deals, we'll know exactly how many there are. And then at the end of the function here, you can see that this is the number that we return to the calling on tester function.
Okay, so with that done, we can now calculate the compound annual growth rate and also the mean drawdown. So here we just initialize a number of key variables such as the starting equity, the final equity, and we also store the current equity and maximum equity at all points in time throughout that process. And so to go through that history, we simply iterate through the equity history array that you saw that we populated as part of the onTick function previously. So here, the first thing we do is update the current equity to the current array value. And then we do a test to see if that is greater than the maximum equity that was previously known. If it was, it means at this point, the equity was making a new high. And so therefore, we need to set the maximum equity to this current equity value. And it's this maximum equity value in a moment that we will use to calculate the drawdown. Now, because we're using a mean drawdown rather than a maximum drawdown, we have to store a cumulative value of every single drawdown that was experienced throughout the whole test. And so here you can see that we increment the sum of the drawdown values to a calculated instantaneous drawdown that you see here. And this is stored as a percentage value. And obviously in order to calculate the average, we also need to know how many drawdown values there are. And so again, when we do this, we then increment the number of drawdown values by one. So by the time we've iterated through every single equity value in the array, we now have a sum of all of the drawdown values and a finalized number of drawdown values. Now, before we perform that calculation, I just want to make note of this here. So very occasionally, the MetaTrader backtester will allow equity to go into a negative value. So for example, if there have been a long series of losing trades, the final trade that gets executed before the backtest is terminated could well take that equity into negative values, which would cause problems when we did our calculation at the next stage. So when that's the case, we simply set the final equity to be zero. Now you saw previously in the onInit function that we set the backtest start date. And here, because we're at the end of the test, we now set the backtest final date. And these combined can be used to give us the backtest duration. But because of the way that MetaTrader works, this value will be a number of seconds for the entire duration. And for our compound annual growth rate calculation, we need that to be in years. And so this statement here converts the seconds into years. And now we have all of the information we need in order to calculate the compound annual growth rate, which we do here. We also have all the values we need for the mean drawdown, which again we calculate here. And just to make sure that we don't have any divide by zero errors, we just perform a quick check before we do that. So with these two values, we can now calculate our finalized metric. And here we set the variable, if you remember, that was passed in by reference here. And so if we now return to the onTester function, you can see that that value will be populated, the number of trades value will be populated, and we can perform our statistical significance check. Now, the last thing that we must make sure we do is to take this value and return it from the onTester function, because it's this that tells MetaTrader to use this value to compare the results of all of the different parameter values. Okay, so please do remember to subscribe and to give me a thumbs up, as this is what tells me I'm doing the right kind of thing. And hopefully you now have all of the information you need to implement this metric into your own EAs to give it a try.
you can get access to the code I've used today on GitHub and there's a link in the video description right below. So hopefully you found that useful and so until next time, trade safe.